coño! Hey everybody, it's Andy Kushner of The Wedding Biz, and this is another episode of The Next Level. And today we have a very special co-host, and that is Cindy Novotny of Master Connection Associates. Cindy is an internationally renowned leader in sales, leadership, and customer service, and she's been branded the radical mentor by thousands of executives around the world for her straightforward, no-nonsense approach to leadership. And uh, recognized by the Association of Talent Development as one of nine most powerful and innovative speakers. Uh, Cindy, it is such a pleasure to have you with us today. Oh, thanks so much. I love being with you, Andy. I actually had Cindy on the show uh, interviewing her, and it was released on August 27th of this year. So be sure to go back and look for that, the interview of Cindy on August 27th. So today, Cindy and I are going to discuss today's guest interview release and suss out a few key topics and translate them into specific tactical strategies to use to bring your business to the next level. And just for a moment, let me mention that if you missed last week, it was a Phil Van Nostrand, a wonderful photographer out of New York and L. LA, who had really insightful tips for networking and also uh, for creating a far more balanced lifestyle than most of us have. It's really fascinating. So be sure to listen to last week uh, with Phil. So today's guest, I'm so excited to say, is David Stark, a renowned New York-based event producer and designer whose team creates major high-profile events worldwide. Some of his high-profile events and clients include Brad Pitt, Saturday Night Live's 40th anniversary special, uh, Louis Vuitton, the Whitney Museum, and the Metropolitan Opera. David also has five books published. He's had product collaborations, including a limited edition collection of -of one-of-a-kind art pieces produced exclusively for Bergdorf Goodman. He's been a guest expert on many television shows and featured in numerous major publications. It was so wonderful having David on the show, an incredible, incredible conversation. So if you haven't heard the actual interview, I really urge you all to listen to it. There's so much to get out of it. Uh, But But Cindy, in terms of a couple highlights that really grabbed my attention that I wanted to talk about with you on the show, is that David talked about how um, when he went to art school, it it was more than just learning to paint. He learned learned to solve problems creatively and how to put together teams and how to invent things. And and he said that as he got into the event uh, industry, he originally thought he wouldn't want to do the business side, but then realized that it's actually a creative act which really grabbed me, and, and that putting together a team is the most creative act that you can pull off. What do you think of that? Well, I absolutely agree. And David is, I'm excited that I've had the opportunity to uh, know David, work with him at several of the wedding events with Engage that I have uh, spoke at and and shared the stage with uh, David. And he is one of those creative talents in this industry that I believe has learned how to mesh both the creative and the business side. And I think that is something that many other creative, talented people struggle with. And I love the fact that David has been able to, to really blend that. And is he talks about his team all the time. And that tells me that he puts his ego to the side and he really learns how to lead and, in, and encourage and empower that team. I agree. He really does. And, you know, it's interesting. He also talked about empowering that team so that they could own their own responsibilities. And he said both inwardly, right inside the company, as well as outwardly to the clients, and that he had to learn to trust those around him to to basically own certain aspects of the responsibilities that were on their collective plates. Yeah. See, one of the things that I have seen over the past 10, 15 years, I've been very involved in the event and wedding business outside of hospitality and hotels, is that many of the top event and design producers tend to control everything. Everything has to go through them and it's their way or the highway. And with David empowering people both inwardly and outwardly, everyone wins. The, his business wins, the client wins, because it's never just about one person. And that's where his creative talent and his visionary outlook on, on life, I think, has set him apart from others. You know, I just want to take a moment and say, wouldn't we all like to have more exposure in our markets? I mean, certainly our own handling of social media and various other tools are ways that we do gain more presence. Though, what if you could have professional outside help that you could depend on 
to really get you the results that you need. And I know we all are happy to get much more presents. Well, I want to tell you about our sponsor of today, OFD Consulting. They are an award-winning publicity agency that focuses on the wedding industry, and their client portfolio ranges from top-tier planners and venues to well-regarded national brands and industry thought leaders. And OFD Consulting has placed clients in a slew of popular online and offline publications, including the New York Times, Martha Stewart Weddings, Style Me Pretty, many others. And they also have a service that's dedicated entirely to B2B press for those looking to elevate their brand reputation among peers through online mentions, guest articles, podcasts, and speaking engagements. So if you are a small business and you want to get more, get your name out there, get more exposure for your brand, get your message out there, and you want to just like dip your toes in the PR waters, check out the OFD Collective, which is a three-star membership with robust educational and coaching opportunities, along with ongoing press leads. So definitely check out OFDconsulting.com. Again, that's OFDconsulting.com. How generally can an entrepreneur empower their people? You know, how do you do that so that they really own their own responsibilities? Well, first and foremost, it is all about who you select. And, you know, based on some of the people I've met within David's organization, he does uh, bring in some very young, uh, exciting new people that are want to learn and grow with him. I think one of the biggest issues is that if you bring people in that want to immediately be you and I'm going to be the next, you know, David. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, then what happens is you're not learning. It's that apprenticeship mentality. So number one, you select the right talent. Number two, you do do have to onboard them properly into your culture. So when you think about when you think about David Stark, you think about this is his company. This is his culture. It's his personality, but he has a lot of people around him. The people that come in have to live that same culture. He can't have inward kind of tug of war going on of, well, if I was in charge, I would do it this way. So I'm not saying that it's his rules or his way. It's the culture that he sets up and you have to onboard and orient people into that culture. Then third, to really empower people, you have to train them. So his ongoing mentorship with his team and training and developing and making sure he's not just throwing them out there and saying, you know, go out and get on with it. It's about giving them the support, the resources, and the tools so that they can do the job right. It's also having a mentality of that open door policy, not open door physically. It's you can come to me with anything. Text me at two in the morning and say, hey, I need you to help me with this right now. And when you have an owner and a business professional visionary like this, they give the confidence to all these people on the team to be able to outwardly take care of the client. And that is the, that's the win. That's what everybody wants because no matter how you slice it or dice it, you're in this business to take care of the client. Yeah, well, I hope at 2.30 in the morning, you're not going to expect me to return your call, Cindy. Yeah, but I don't work for you. So there you go, right? <laughs> That's right. Exactly. No, but, but it's interesting what you're saying because I also, you know, in my own company, Kushner Entertainment, I'm aware that for my team, I have to, you know, periodically check in with them, you know, almost like like taking their temperature. It's like, you know, I, I want to initiate and come to them and, and make sure that they're doing OK. They're not holding back any kind of issues that might cause some resentment. And and like you say, that they have the support that they need. And so I think that's also really important is that we as the owners, the presidents have to come to our people and not wait, you know, and remind them, hey, how are things going? How are you feeling? Is there anything I can do to help you? Right. I do that on a weekly basis with all my direct reports and, and then filtered on down throughout my organization. Everybody else is doing that with theirs, but my team knows. So the reason I say two in the morning is I'm on a different continent and a different time zone I all the time. And so my team might be in the middle of their day and they actually, they need me. This is the empowerment. I will, I, they know not to text me because I won't answer a text because I won't even hear it because I'm sleeping. I will answer a phone and everyone knows if they're calling me, I know they need me. And I have no, and this happens maybe, oh, I don't know, 
two or three times a month max. So, but I, they know that I'm not going to be upset. They know that, you know what, we actually have to just ask how she thinks we should do this. And I'd rather that than them having a stomach ache and fretting about it or making the wrong decision, which ultimately affects the client. And that's the way they don't call me about a team meeting they're having. It's something that has to do with immediate emergency with a client. And I think David has created that same sort of culture where people feel really good and he's approachable. I want to bring up to another point, you know, he talked about looking at business as something that will always have something out of balance. And, and, you know, we talked about anxiety and, and he was saying how part of the anxiety, but also the joy is having a challenge and figuring out how to fix it. And that invariably when you fix something that has gone wrong, something else goes wrong. So there's the whole creative behind finding the solution to these problems that that's a driving factor behind doing the work as well as making money. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, it's like anything in life, you know, you, you have a home and, you know, as soon as you think everything's fine, you know, I'm thinking of my house in Southern California, we had fires all over the place and everybody, we had no rain. All of a sudden the rain pours down and our roof starts leaking. I'm like, are you kidding? We were able to keep, you know, fires away from the houses and do those things. And now the roof stops leaking. So every time you think that, oh, wow, we got this fixed, we've got that fixed, something else goes on. And in business, this is never going to go away. And that's why anxiety is something that many people have. I have anxiety. Everybody has anxiety. It's how you channel that anxiety. If somebody says, oh, I have no anxiety or I never get nervous, I basically think they're boring and they're probably not that successful. Anxiety is not something, oh, I've got to be medicated, that sort of thing. Anxiety is that burning in the belly that says, oh my gosh, I am, I'm nervous about this, or I'm launching something new, or how did this possibly happen? And how am I going to fix it? Everyone looks to the leader when that happens. So no matter what is going on internally in that furnace of a belly of mine, I've got to outwardly show air conditioning, right? I got to show I, I'm cool, I'm collected, I've got it down. If someone on my team says, are you nervous before a big speech? Are you nervous about this? I never lie. I go, yeah, I, I am completely nervous. But that nervousness or that anxiety builds you up to fuel you to kind of fight through that. And that's what I, and I'm not a creative talent like David. I can only imagine that someone that has his creative uh, talent and knowledge and education and background, that would even be more spun up because your mind is like, this should work perfectly because this is how I put it together. And somebody that was building the set or doing, you know, the scene or something, it's, it's not coming together because the craftsmen aren't figuring it out. And that is something I couldn't even imagine dealing with. But that's where I think his ability to to push through that and keep his team all focused on the solution is what allows him to be successful. You know, we're talking about pushing boundaries and Dave is a great example of someone who does that. And so that that's going to create this like anxiety that you're talking about. And otherwise, like you said, it, it, it's pretty boring and what's going on. And, you know, there's this beautiful quote that I took out of the interview that kind of sums up so far what we've been talking about. Then I have one more topic. He said that he learned to be, quote unquote, truly healthy in that world and do the best job he could creatively is to have to have a structure and a foundation from which we can create from. And I, I thought that was great. You got to build that structure and foundation in order to have a healthy environment to create from, you know, is how I'm paraphrasing it. I thought that was wonderful. Oh, a hundred percent agree. And this is, if, if anybody listening to this podcast doesn't take away anything, take away that because here's what I believe he's referring to when he said this in his, in his interview with you, here's the, the bottom line. You can be so talented and so creative, whether it's in music or art or design or floral or, you know, training or speaking. But if you don't have repeatable, sustainable foundations in place, it will crumble. I look at it again. I'm going to refer to a house. I don't know why you think I'm in, you know, building or something. <laughs> it's like you don't build a solid foundation. You will not be able to keep up that structure. And that's what a lot of people don't do right in this business. They're really good at something and they are good individually. And then they bring people on to assist them, but they don't have processes in place. They don't have that culture in place, the foundation, those non-negotiables. This is how we always work. This is how we look. This is how we represent, you know, the brand, David Stark brand, you know, our brand, Cindy Devotney, Master Connection Associates, our brand. You can come from another great designer, but if you're going to work, 
under another name, you've got to be a part of that foundation. And those sustainable, repeatable processes is what allows you to go into the future. Otherwise, you're constantly trying to reinvent, constantly trying to change. And that that is how it's not healthy. And that's what he's talking about with a healthy organization. People shouldn't walk on eggshells. People shouldn't walk around with stomach aches. People shouldn't walk around on the verge of tears every five minutes. This industry should be exciting and fun and looking at how we're creating dreams and memories and not having people so stressed out they're about ready to lose it. Well, and add to that, that in our industry, the event industry, it's all about emotion. I mean, emotion is permeating everything. That's what it's all about. We're telling the story of our clients in a way that emotionally grabs people. And so you also have that element on top of it all. So having that balance, you know, coming back to how we started between the art and the business is so critical so that you can, you know, create this environment to be able to do this. Yes. So when anybody says, you know, oh, it's business, it's, it's not personal, it's just business. Well, that is not my life. Yes, everything in my life. It's personal and it's business because what's personal is business and what's business is personal because it is emotional. If you really just go to work every day and it's just a job, then I really don't want you on my team. You know, I, I want you to have balance, truly. I know I talk right. about living with no balance. I want you to go home at night and be with your family or whoever you live with or dog or cat or plant. It's not that. It's that when you're with me, I need you 100%. And that's mm. the emotion. It can't just be the creative talent, the creative artist the owner, the entrepreneur, everyone that supports that team has got to have the same emotion that we are all in this for one. We are all in this for the client. We're all in this for the business. And that's the emotional part of it. And I don't believe that's just our business. I think that's any business. And, and I think that successful businesses wrap their arms around their teams and really create that almost bond that, you know, let's go. A team is truly a team when everybody wants everybody to win. Yeah, I agree. I love that. Well, that's all we have time for today. Cindy, I thank you so much for joining us today on the show. And I want to urge everyone to check out her interview on The Wedding Biz, August 27th, and go to her website at masterconnection.com. And David Stark, my God, what a fantastic, again, conversation. If you missed it, there's so much more you can get by listening to it. And in terms of where to find out more about him, as well as how to order his books and more, go to davidstarkdesign.com. Again, David starkdesign.com. Again, we really appreciate you listening. For more information, go to theweddingbiz.com and be sure to subscribe and share with friends and colleagues. And thank you again, everybody. And we'll be talking to you next week. Thank you so much. 